Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IS Academy. Today's date is 4th of April 2025. Now displayed here are the list of articles that we are going to discuss today. In this first article, we will be discussing about painted lady butterflies. Now currently it is in news because of a study and we will be seeing about the findings of the study. In the second article, we will be discussing about government e-marketplace, what are all the advantages of it and achievements. In the third article, we will be seeing about Naini Lake which is in uh, Nainital and in the fourth article, we will be discussing about the two important Harappan sites that has been dis uh, that has been added as a archaeological site by Har uh, Haryana. So without any delay, let us get into the article discussion. Now look at this article, as the title of the article hints, this article talks about painted lady butterflies. Now currently it is in news because a team has actually made a study on the migratory pattern of this particular species and they have identified certain key important uh, findings. So we shall see about that one by one from the prelims perspective. Before that we shall quickly go through the syllabus. In prelims it will be asked under biodiversity, species migrations, scientific innovation and climate change impacts and in the main it will be asked under both uh, GS paper 1 and GS paper 3. In GS paper 1, it will be asked under geography part, especially biogeography, species adaptation. And in GS paper 3, it will be asked under biodiversity, conservation, climate change and scientific advancements. So we shall start with the basics of painted lady butterfly. So this is how the particular butterfly looks like. And it is a very uh, unique species because it travels around the world. The only place you cannot see the particular species is uh, Antarctica and South America. And it is least concerned in uh, IUCN uh, red list and the uh, habitat when you are talking about it, it belongs to temperate grasslands to deserts and they are well renowned for their migratory pattern. They migrate all around the world. Now moving on, we shall see about the migratory behavior, they origin from North Africa, Middle East as well as Central Asia and they migrate up to 15,000 kilometers in a single cycle. And the pattern they have uh, multi-generational, uh, they do not uh, complete the cycle in a single generation meaning they will take at least 8 to 10 uh, generation to complete one migratory cycle. So remember this and they have uh, flight ability, they have high, high speed, high altitude flight with powerful thor thoracic muscles. So these are all very important factors that you have to remember when it comes to this migratory behavior. Now let us quickly go through what are the key findings of the report. See firstly the study said that no genetic difference between short and long distance migrants. So this particular species itself has both the short distance uh, migrants as well as long distance migrants and they do not have genetic difference. So this is what the very basic finding of the report. Secondly, migration is driven by environmental factor and not genetic factor. So here you have to learn about one, uh, two important uh, science terms. One is genotype and another one is uh, phenotype. So what is this genotype? Genotype is nothing but uh, the gene of that particular organism will have the particular uh, try it but it will not be visible in the physical sense. So that is what is called genotype and when we talk about phenotype, pheno itself it means visible. So the traits that are visible uh, through our characters is what we call it as uh, phenotype. So here you can see the difference, the genetic makeup of an organism is genotype, the observable physical trait or characteristics is called as phenotype and the basis it is determined by the organism's DNA. Here the phenotype it is determined by result of uh, genotype as well as genetic interaction. So there will be a genotype which means you will have the triad. When this triad uh, combines with the environmental factor, it leads to phenotype. A very good example is this migration. This migration is a very good example for uh, phenotype when it comes to insects, birds as well as uh, uh, the butterflies. So when we talk about the visibility, they are not visible externally, the genotype it is not visible externally, but the phenotype it is visible through height, eye color and etc. And the influence it is purely genetic and the influence is both gene as well as environmental factor. And the example for this is AA, uh, both AA is capital because both are uh, dominant character. So AA is one dominant and one recessive, AA is both are recessive. So these are all certain combinations that are uh, not visible in the character. But when it has a uh, proper interaction with the environmental factor, it leads to uh, 
physical trait, observable physical trait. And the changeability does not change during the lifetime, but this can change due to environmental condition. Imagine you are in South Asia and you are going to Europe and based on the conditions, you yourself will adapt over years. So this means that the phenotype can be changed. And finally, the scientific uh, study, this uh, genotype it is used in uh, genes and the phenotype is used in genetics, developmental biology and environmental science. So these are the two important key uh, scientific terms that you have to remember. Now moving on, we shall see some of other uh, scientific uh, findings of the report. Firstly, using the isotope tracing. Isotope tracing is nothing but the wings, they have specific isotypes based on the uh, place where they origin. So with that, they have identified the origin of uh, each birds, uh, sorry, each butterflies. And they found that single interbreeding population, there is no genetic diversity based on distance. See, when we talk about birds, they have uh, genetic diversity based on the distance they travel. So that is the major finding. But when we talk about the butterflies, there is no genetic variation. But there are uh, varieties like one is short traveling and the another one is long traveling, but the gen genes are same. And thirdly, wing shape or size, based on the wing shape or size also, it does not differ. They are not linked to migrate, a migration distance. Both have the same type and that is why they tell this. And finally, environmental factor, they are the primary driver of migration. Now, moving on, now the very key difference between the two is birds, they return to same breeding ground. But when it comes to butterflies, they do not return. Each generation continues migration. So imagine there is a particular uh, generation and this uh, one generation, they will travel to certain distance and uh, they will lay their uh, cocoons here and the cocoons will be growing and this cocoon will move to next place. So this way they will be completing a complete migratory cycle and this is how uh, butterflies and birds are different. So these are all very important facts that you have to remember. Based on the things we have discussed, I have framed a prelims question for you. Painted lady butterflies use which of the following to retain isotopes for migration tracking? The correct answer for the particular question is option B, wings. So, these, so with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this article, recently Startup Mahakum 2025 has been organized and that is why government e-marketplace is in news. So this particular topic, government e-marketplace, uh, it will be asked under uh, GS paper 1 in prelims, uh, especially in the public policy. In GS paper 3 mains, it will be asked under economic development and inclusive growth. So we shall see about what is the basics of this government market e-marketplace. So it was launched in 2016 and it is developed by DGSMD, which is Director General of Supplies and uh, Disposals, as well as Meithi, Ministry of Environment, uh, sorry, Electronics and Information Technology, and NEGD, which is nothing but National E-Governance Division. So it is managed by Government E-Marketplace Special Purpose Vehicle, in short called as GEM SPV, which is under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. So it is developed by one particular uh, ministry and it is managed by another particular ministry. Now remember this difference. And the purpose is to uh, public procurement portal for both goods and services. Now moving on, we shall see about the pillars of GEM. First is efficiency, which is AI driven procurement, faster processing. See, priorly before this marketplace, e-marketplace, you have to procure it uh, physically, which is very difficult. And procuring from across the states is also very difficult. But currently it is AI driven, so the efficiency has increased. Secondly, transparency, digital auditing trial is there. So there, 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 there is a very uh, transparent uh, a bill where we can see all the things that has been procured by a particular vendor. So this will reduce manipulation, the double accounting will be uh, minimized and even the fake uh, vendors will be controlled. And finally inclusion, it focuses on um, MSME, it, brought, it brings a lot of it, uh, it uh, is actually a platform for both the suppliers as well as procure, procurers. Uh, so the suppliers include MSMEs, women led uh, units, even artisans and FPOs. And currently the Mahakumb is also for startups. So it encourages a lot of startups for public procurement. So it lies as a platform. So while the goods has been procured and it has been put under sale and the vendors they can actually procure from this particular place so it is a two-way communication point 
and what are all the advantages centralized procurement uh, portal and it brings in automation ensure if ensuring efficiency and it will boost msme as well as startups and uh, it brings a lot of policy reforms and the compliance driven so these are all very important advantages what are all the achievements it brings in steady increase in transaction value since 2016 to 2024 uh, here the steady is very important so it means the growth is on the peak and the growth is only moving upwards and there is no downfall in any of the particular year and it has supported chandrayaan 3 mission even and it provides 50 percentage uh, suppliers or msmes which is a very important thing and moving on based on the things we have discussed i have uh, created a prelims question for you what was the government e-market launch when was the government uh, e-market launched correct answer is 2016. so with these learned points in order to move on to the next news article discussion now look at this news article as the title itself hints this article talks about Naini Lake and it tries to explain why Naini Lake is seeing record low water levels this year. So from the prelims perspective this particular topic it can be asked under current affairs of national importance and in the mains it can be asked under GS paper 1 location changes in critical uh, geographical futures including water bodies and ice caps. So the news is that uh, water level of Naini Lake has dropped to 4.7 feet which is below uh, which is 5 years low. So this is the lowest point uh, in the past 5 years. So you can use this point in your mains as answer and this threatens drinking water scarcity uh, security especially for the people from Nainital. So we shall see about this particular Naini Lake. See as the as you can see in this image Nainital is present here in Uttarakhand and it is a Naini is a lake in this particular uh, place. So it is a natural kidney shaped lake surrounded by seven hills. So this is how the actual lake looks like. Now currently the water level of this particular lake has dropped down and uh, it has been found by the Mr. P. Baron, uh, sorry Baron in 1839 and it is the third largest lake in Uttarakhand by surface area and it connects Malital which is in north and Talital which is in south through bridges with world's only post office on lake bridge. So it has 76 percentage of the Nainital's uh, wa water demand is met by this particular lake. This is as per 2024. Now currently it has dried up due to a lot of reasons. Let us quickly go through the reasons one by one. See the first major reason is the climate change. So, so there is a lot of decline in snowfall as well as rainfall especially during the winter. So this led to uh, reduced water storage that should happen uh, during winter which will help in summer. So this was not there. Secondly, man-made disruptions. There was a lot of man-made disruptions. For example, unplanned uh, construction and encroachment and there is degradation of the recharge zone as well as concrete structures uh, has been built up. This has reduced to the rainwater infiltration that will uh, come up to the lake. So these are all certain man-made disruptions. Apart from this, there is a particular uh, restoration project that is happening near uh, Sukhathal Lake. So this Sukhathal Lake has been uh, altered heavily. For example, even concrete has been used in this particular lake to restore and even siltation and debris work, uh, dumping work is actually happening. So all these affect the aquifer's recharge ability and the pollution, untreated wastewater discharge is happening and even the solid waste dumping and overflowing sewage systems. So all these has led to uh, increasing in uh, pollutants in the particular lake and since the BOD level has gone very low, it has led to habitat risk destruction heavily. So these are all very important facts that you have to remember. Now what are the implications of these uh, changes? Firstly, acute drinking water scarcity especially in Nainital uh, during the summer season and there is ecological imbalance and impact on local biodiversity. See what happens when lakes they get uh, uh, drastically damaged is the uh, entire habitat, uh, the entire uh, ecological services provided by the particular lake will be disrupted. Uh, if, especially when the pollution, polluted water is added, the organic matter to digest to digest, digest all the polluted matter will be very low. So even if the water is there, even if 4 feet of water is there, it will not be used for uh, drinking water. So this is why it is a very big concern. And finally, the tourist and livelihood are at risk. So people are visiting to the particular pictogra uh, pictographic uh, view that 
that is provided by this lake. So if water is not there, there is no tourism which will affect the livelihood uh, especially around the region. So these are all the implications of the uh, reduced water level in Naini Lake. Now based on the things we have discussed, I have framed a prelims question for you. Naini Lake is located in which Indian state? The correct answer for the particular question is option B Uttarakhand. So with these land points and I will just move on to the next news article discussion. Now look at this article, the title of the article reads, Haryana declares two Harappan civilization spots as protected archaeological sites. So this particular uh, two different archaeological sites includes uh, Mitatal and uh, Tiharana. These two sites are in Bivani district which is in uh, Haryana. So this particular site, it has been announced under Haryana Ancient and Historical Monuments and Archaeological Sites and Remains Act 1964. So this is why both the sites, especially the Harappan sites are in news. So this particular topic, it can be asked in the prelims as well as mains. In prelims, it will be asked in the history of India. In mains, it will be asked in GS Paper 1, Indian Heritage and Culture. So we shall start with the Mitatal uh, site. It is uh, first discovered in 1913. Here you can look, look at the location of the particular uh, place. And here they found a lot of coins of uh, Samutra Gupta as well. And uh, they excavated this particular site in 1968. Uh, this revealed copper bronze age culture. And uh, it is associated, associated with Indo Gangetic divide, uh, which is um, way back to 3rd and 2nd millennium BCE. And certain findings include beads, copper implants, uh, then terracotta, shell, stone, ivory, pottery with uh, pipa leaf or uh, fish scale as well as geometric motifs. And uh, Harappan elephants like uh, town planning and art and art crafts has been found in this particular space. So this is about a uh, Mitatal site and we shall see about the uh, Tigarana site. It, it belongs to the date of uh, around 2400 BCE which is a uh, Chalcolithic period and it is set, uh, settlements uh, by Scythians in modest mud brick houses. So this is the first site. Uh, so this is one of the site which has mud brick houses and certain findings include wheel made ceramics, then domesticated animals as well as um, agriculture or certain significant find findings in this particular space. Artifacts include copper, bronze, stone tools, beads, green carolina bangles and etc. And they had multiple cultural phases. For example, they had uh, uh, pre uh, Siswal as well as pre uh, Harappan as well as pre uh, as well as the post Harappan uh, culture tied up in their site. So these two sites are very important. You can uh, mark it in the map. It, it will be asked in the preliminary question, question. Every year there will be a question based on IVC and since it is in news, it can be straight away asked in the news. Now let us quickly go through the significance of the finding. Firstly, it provides insights into early forming community. Secondly, it reflects continuity of human settlement in Northern India as well as it provides evidence of trade, craftsmanship and social organi organization. See, these kind of sites, it help us to understand the life, lifestyle of the people uh, and the culture of the people back then and how it has evolved over time. So this will help us to understand the evolution of human itself. So now let us quickly go through the prelims question that has been um, asked from the uh, article what kind of pottery was commonly found in Mittatil? So here the correct answer for the question is option B paint a red bar with black designs. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video hit like do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Now thank you so much for listening.